everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. If you haven't sent for your picture of Lum and Abner yet, I suggest you'd better hurry. Thousands of rappers have come in requesting one of these big 8x10 autographed pictures of the lovable old characters, and we had only a limited quantity to start with, so we'll have to withdraw this offer soon. This picture's just the thing for completing that picture album of yours, or for framing and showing to your friends. It shows the old philosophers both as they appear down in Pine Ridge and as they really are. And if you've never seen the real Lumen Abner, you've got a surprise coming. You'll never believe that the quaint, comic-looking old fellows at the bottom of the picture are the same persons as the two good-looking men at the top. To get one of these pictures, all you have to do is to write your name and address on the back of a wrapper from a half-pound or larger-sized package of Horlicks malted milk. Then... Send your wrapper to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are now listening. Got that? Well, you'll get your picture right away. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. When Lum and Abner turned all of their hogs over to Squire Skimp to sell for them, they neglected to get a receipt. Now the old fellows are at the mercy of the squire. The hogs have been shipped to Chicago and other northern markets... And the boys have no way of knowing how much money will be due them from the sale. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Abner down at the Jotham Down store. Lum is just entering. Listen. Uh, Lum, you had about a half a dozen telephone calls since you've been gone. Uh, who was he to call me? I don't know. I never asked him. I, I just told him that you weren't here, and he said they'd call back later. Hmm. More than likely calling up on to get my advice on some business finance matters, I reckon. Well, they never said. There was one of them was a woman, I know that. I a woman? Yeah. Well, I reckon it was some woman's club then. Parents' teachers' associations or ladies' aid society or some of them want me to make a talk at one of the meetings, maybe. Make a talk? Yeah, I have a lot of that to do now that I've made such a success out of it. Yeah? <laughs> uh, what's the matter with your woman, Abner, Elizabeth? I don't know. What? Well, I, I passed her down the road there just now, and she never even spoke. I lifted my hat and spoke just as friendly as I knowed how, and she just throwed her head in the air and never even nodded. Oh, oh yeah, I know, Lum. Uh, you and her has had a falling out. Had a falling out? Yeah. Well, I ain't even seen her in a week. Well, uh, she's the one that fell out. She's mad at you over all the damage them hogs done while we had them over at the place. Well, that was the hogs done that, though. That wasn't my fault. Well, she's blaming it on you, anyhow. Why, why don't you blame it on you? The hogs is as much yours as it was mine. Yeah, but, but she's mad because you made me keep them over there. Well, I never made you keep them over there. That was your idea. Yeah, but she don't know that now. Well, why didn't you tell her? Well, I was the one that told her it was your idea. I couldn't turn right back around then and tell it was mine, could I? You mean you told Elizabeth that it was my fault we kept them hogs over there? Well, I never exactly told her that it was you, but uh, she knows it was me or you one, and I told it wasn't me. That, that must be where she got the idea. Well, no wonder she acted that way then. Oh, yeah, she's pretty mad about it, all right. She said some awful mean things about you this morning. She did? Yeah, I, I wanted to take up for you so bad I couldn't hardly stand myself, but I had sense enough to keep my mouth shut. Well, I wish she knowed the straight of it. There's no reason for her to be mad at me. Well, now, you can't hardly blame her, though, Lom. If, if you worked as hard as she has, planting a garden and them flower beds out there, and then have a batch of hogs come in there and root it all up, well, you'd be mad, too, I bound you. Well, you talk like I was the one that rooted them up. Oh, no, no, she don't think it was you. She knows it was a hog. But she blames you for leaving the hogs over there. I want you to step out of the phone right now and call her up and explain to her that I never had a thing to do with putting them hogs over there. Uh. Well, she ain't home if you just now passed her down the road there. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. Well, you've got things where I'd be fair to go to your place now. Uh, yeah, but I was to tell her that it was my fault, too. I couldn't neither one of us go over there. Ain't no use to bring me in on this, for she's done mad at you. Well, I'll go over there tonight with you. Sort of talk to her. Undoubtedly, both of us together ought to be able to explain it to her. And I can just stay for supper while I'm there. Yeah, that's a thing to do. Just tell her that you never know that they was going to do so much damage when you sent them over there. Yeah, I'll figure out something to tell her. 
I'll get her back in good humor if I have to sit there till 9 o'clock talking to her. Yeah. Uh, I just got done patching up a little misunderstanding me and Evelina had with one another. Uh, what's the matter with you and Evelina? Ain't nothing the matter now. She just seen me all dressed up again today, and I hadn't been over to see her, and she figured I was sparking somebody else, maybe. Is that where you've been all afternoon? Well, I stopped by there a few minutes. I seen her coming home from school, and I catched up with her and walked home with her and carried her books and all. Yeah. Yeah, I was over to see Caleb Wienard about making that statuary of us, too. You aiming on having Caleb make it? Yeah, you recollect once before he was going to make one for me, and I explained to him then how to make them so he already knows how. Well, he never has made one, though, has he? No, but he's done a lot of concrete work. Made that well curb over at the schoolhouse and that watering trough in front of Dick's store. So. Yeah, but now, Lom, that's a heap different than making something that'll look like us. Well, we'll give him a picture of us to go by. See, what he does is just stack a bunch of cement up there and let it dry and then take a hammer and chisel and, and just start chiseling down to where it'll look like us. Yeah. Well, I'll pay my part of it, but I'm... Um... Just a little jubilant about Caleb ever making a statue where that look like anything. Oh, I don't think you have no trouble. He did try to get me to leave the hog out of it. Said he didn't think that'd look right, us standing there with the hog. Yeah. <laughs> well, after I was telling Dick Cullison about it, Lord. <laughs> he said folks would have trouble telling the three of us apart. <laughs> yeah, he was judging me about it. All that, bound for him. Just wait, though, till we have the unveiling and present it to the citizens of Pine Ridge. Granny, that'll make them shut up and take notice. You think, Abner, years after we've passed on to our reward, folks will be walking by there and pinting at us and saying, there stands the hog king. I, I thought we was going to be sitting down. Well, there sets the hog king, then. Yeah, yeah, that'll look more natural, I'm having us sitting there. But I, I, I'm just afraid to think what it'll look like again, Caleb, get through with it. I don't want nobody getting me mixed up with no hog, I know that. Well, me and him was talking a while ago. I, I believe we've got a scheme studied up to where it can't help but look like us. That is, if you don't mind to having a little plaster Paris put on yourself. Plaster Paris? Yeah, you know that stuff they make casts out of, like when you break your arm? Sort of like concrete, dry as Yeah, hard. I know what it is, sure. Well, I thought up the idea myself, and Caleb says he thinks it'll work all right. He's going to cover us over good with a thick coating of that plaster Paris and let it dry on there, and then when we get out of it, why, there'll be a mold of us. And he'll fill the mold up with concrete and let the concrete dry, and then when he takes the plaster Paris off the concrete, why, there we'll be. What? I mean, there'll be the statuary of us. Yeah, well, how are we going to breathe if we're all covered up with that plaster Paris? Well, we'll have to have a tube run out of our mouth to breathe out of it, like a feller does when he's walking underwater, you know. Yeah. Well, might have us making out like we're smoking a pipe, and then we could just hold a pipe in our mouth and breathe through that. Yeah, cigars, that'd look better. Yeah. Well, now, that gets us all right, but what about the hog? It wouldn't look right for him to be standing up there in a the statue where he's smoking a pipe too long. No, I'm afraid we're going to have trouble ever getting a hog to stay still long enough for that plaster paste to dry, too. Yeah, yeah, unless we catch one asleep from it. Well, Caleb's going to study about it, and I'm going to study about it some more. We'll figure out some way. We don't want to start no how until Squire gets back from Chicago with her money. Well, I just hope we get her money. I was telling Dick Huddleston about us forgetting to count how many hogs we let Squire have, and he said we'd be lucky if we got anything. Yeah, we'll law sue him to the high court to get that money. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, but the trouble is, Long, we ain't got no receipt, no showing of no kind. Dick says he wouldn't have to pay us nothing unless he's a mind to do it. Well, we've got proof, though, that we turned the hogs over to him. Cedric helped load them. Yeah, but Dick him. said that Squire could claim that he'd already paid us for them, and we ain't got no way of proving that he ain't. Said it'd just be up to us to prove that the hogs are ours in the first place. Uh, I believe as our ring answered the phone app. Is that all right? I think so. Well, it's more likely for you. Go ahead and answer it, Mom. No, you answer it. If it's somebody wanting me, tell them they'll have to make a pint man to talk to me. I can't be jumping up and answering a phone every few minutes. Rich as I am, my time's valuable. Tell them I'm in a conference. Well, now, which one of them things do you want me to tell them? Well, tell them all of them. Well, if I can recollect them. Hello? Yeah, he's here. Well, he said you'd have to make a pint mint with him. Said he couldn't be jumping up and answering the phone every few minutes because he's in a conference or something like that. Uh, tell him I'll give him a pint mint at 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Tell him to call me then. 
Uh, he said for you to call him tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock and he'll talk to you. <laughs> huh? Well, that's what he said anyway. Well, you have to talk to him about that. No, I don't want to talk to him. I I'm just you. telling you what he said. Yeah, he's so rich now that his time's too valuable to be talking to you on the telephone. That's what he said. That's your time, Abner. Just let them know how important I am. They don't want to call tomorrow at 2 o'clock. I don't care whether they call or not. Uh, he, he said it never made no difference to him whether he ever called or not. That's just what he said. All right. All right, Evelina. Goodbye. Who? What did you say there to last? Who was that? That was Evelina. I never seen her so mad in my Evelina. life. Evelina? Well, why in the world didn't you say so? Abner, you idiot natural, I'd want to make her wait till tomorrow afternoon to talk to me. Well, tomorrow afternoon be too late anyway, Lom, for she wanted you to take her over to sea stunks to a party tonight, but she said she'd just get Frank Foster to carry her over. I said his time weren't so valuable. Oh, my goodness. Now you did it. Abner, sometimes I get so dead blamed aggravated at you. <laughs> it looks like the Hog King picked out the wrong person to impress this time. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to have you hear the contents of a letter from Mr. J.K. Long, dealer in leaf tobacco of Versailles, Ohio. I think it'll interest everybody. Mr. Long writes, hey, Please permit me to tell you of my experience with your malted milk tablets. My son, 10 years old, has been in very poor health for seven years. We tried everything known to medical science to increase his appetite, but to no avail. About a month ago, we purchased a big bottle of Horlicks chocolate malted milk tablets. They have so built him up but he has a wonderful appetite, eating anything and everything placed before him, and has gained 11 pounds in a little over a month. I cannot speak too highly for your wonderful product. Well, thank you, Mr. Long. As you say, it really is amazing what Horlick's tablets can do and have done in a wide variety of cases. They are sustaining and invigorating and delicious as well. Don't forget, folks, that you can get a big autographed picture of Lum and Abner while the limited supply lasts simply by sending your name and address on the back of a wrapper from a half pound or larger size package of Horlick's malted milk to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are now listening. This is Carlton Pickett speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlick, who now bid you all good night and good health.